Semester's almost over. Can you sense it? We're in the last chapter that we're doing. And I'm going, I'm going deeper into difference equations rather than some of the other ideas in the book. There's going to be one more set of ideas from the book. We'll do the web diagrams. But I'd like to do a second order difference equation for you because the book only does first order. They, they only need to look at some second order ones, but not, not this kind. So in this, in this problem here, we have r sub n plus 2 point, equals 0.4 times r sub n plus 1 minus 0.3 times r sub n. So it's second order because there's a difference of 2 between this time step and that time step. And then it's plus 12, and you can see the initial conditions over there. Now, because it's a second order, you've got to have two initial conditions. All this stuff should be sounding familiar. In fact, what I would do if this was a regular you know, three-hour-long class is, as I do this problem, I would be doing a regular second-order differential equation right alongside of it to show you how the dif difference equation version really follows the same steps. So look at the starting, just the start. We've got a second-order equation. It's non-homogeneous because of this term. It's just a constant term. That won't scare us too much. And then two initial conditions. So that means we're going to get one specific solution, but it's going to be made from two two different fundamental solutions. There's going to be something to a power and something else to a power, and they're going to be different. Now, how do we find those two things? Well, that's, that's, the, that's, that's a big difference in difference equations. We don't use e to the rt. We don't do the continuous. We do this, this uh, discrete version. So pretend the, pretend the 12 isn't there. Bring everything over to this side. And now I have r sub n plus 2 minus 0.4 r sub n plus 1 plus 0.03 r sub n. And just pretend that r sub n is k to a power. So this is k to the 0 power, k to the first power, k to the second power. And it factors. So expect that when I give you 1. But what if it didn't factor? You'd be using quadratic formula to find your roots. We're not going to do anything like that. And I'm going to give you ones that factor. Uh, quadratic formula is OK, but what if you get complex? Then you go to complex space. We don't do that. And it doesn't fit with uh, sine and cosine, but it does fit with an oscillation thing. We aren't going there at all. We don't have time. And it's not in the book anyway. I'm going one step beyond the book just doing this. I don't want to go five more steps beyond. Anyway, so these are our two roots. 0.3 and 0.1 comes from factoring this characteristic equation. And instead of e to the 0.3, each of these things becomes 0.3 to the n, and it gets a coefficient. And this guy becomes 0.1 to the n, and it gets a coefficient. And this is my homogeneous solution. And now what do I do? What do I do? I've got a homogeneous solution. Now what do I do? Oh, you do the particular solution. And then you put the particular solution in with the homogeneous solution, and you do the initial conditions. And what do you find? You find the A and the B, the specific A and the B that make this thing uh, a true statement. Then you have the specific solution. What do you do then? What do you do then? You check it. You check it. You take two steps of it, put them in this thing, put them in the, the difference equation, and see if you get a true statement. We're going to do all that, but you should have known. It's the same dance we've been doing for a while. Continuing along. All right. We got the homogeneous solution. Now we got to do the equilibrium. So E doesn't change. So whichever time step you're on, it's still E. So I have E equals 0.4 E minus 0.3 E plus 12. Now we got to find the number E that makes this happen, which you can check. So anyway, um, subtracting 0.4, adding 0.03, I get 0.63 E equals 12. Dividing by 0.63, I get something bigger than 12, this 19.04762. What would you do if you were paranoid? What would you do if you were worried about getting this thing right? You would take this number and put it in these spots to make sure that it gives you, um, that, that it balances out. Or you could put it in the original difference equation for each of these R spots, put in this number and see if this number is equal to this calculation on that side. And it checks. So it's the equilibrium position. All right, so save that. You need that. That's like your particular solution. So what do you do? You've got the homogeneous solution plus the particular solution. So this is the general solution. You, now what do you do with the general solution? Everybody knows. You put in the initial conditions and find the A and the B. Find these 
specific constants that are going to make this stuff true. So I put in a 0 for each n. Each of these pieces goes to 1. And I get a plus b plus this ugly number, 19.04762, equals 50. Subtract the 19.04762, you get 30.95238 equals a plus b. Now you need another a plus b equation, or another a and b equation, and you get that from the second initial condition. So you've got to do a 0.3, a 0.3, because now n is 1, a 0.3 times a, a 0.1 times b. So you see them over there, plus the 19, you know, the fixed number. All right, so what I did was I subtracted the 19 point blah, blah, blah from the 20. So I get a really small number, 0.9 something. And that's equal to 0.3a plus 0.1b. I multiplied by 10. Because then I get a whole number, 3a plus a 1b, and it equals 9.5238. Now i got to take these two equations and solve for a and b. But it's good. they're going to be pretty numbers, but it's just um, solving two equations with two unknown. Oh, I see a sleepy weasel. She was taking a nap, but I woke her up to be with us. Look at how her legs are still all stretched out. Oh, it's tough. It is tough. She's got to get her 21 hours of sleep per day. All right, so we left off. We're seeking the specific solution. We're looking for the coefficient of the point 0.3 to the n, the coefficient of the point 0.1 to the n. We got the uh, equilibrium term. We got it. We got it. All right, so working upwards from here, trying to solve this system. What I did was I subtracted to cancel the b's. So I have the 0.95 equals 3a plus b, and I'm subtracting the 30.95 equals the a plus b. So the b's cancel. I have 2a equals this stuff, and I get, OK, see you later. And I get this negative 10.71 for a, and that forces b to be 41.6 bar. So putting uh, this in for A in either of these equations here, I get this number for B. So the B, remember, was on the uh, point 0.1. So this is 41.6 bar. And the, ten, the negative 10.71429. There's our specific solution. Now what do we do with this thing? We check. We check. Because we are mighty good mathematicians. Now, how do you check? Well, you take two derivatives and put it into the original differential, differential equation. But wait a second. We have a difference equation. So we have, this is r for any n. I can let n be whatever I want it to be. So when I have uh, um, n equals 0, I have 10.71 plus 41.6 bar plus 19. Wait, one of these is minus. That's a minus 10. Minus 10.7 plus 41.6 bar plus 19. If you do the math, it comes up to be like 50.0004 or something like that. Then uh, we got to check the second initial condition, which is a 0.3 times this, a 0.1 times this, and add the 19. And it comes out to be very close to 20. You can check those yourself. But how do we check it in the difference equation? Suppose we wanted to do that in the difference equation. Well, this is r sub n. So we have to do, if you wanted to check it, the big check would be for n, um, for n plus 2, that's 0.9, uh, 0.09. So I have negative 10.71429 times 0.3 squared, 0.09, times 0.3 to the n. I'm doing that so that this term can rock and roll with all the other 0.3 to the n's. Next one, I've got the 41.6 bar. And it's times 0.1 squared, which is 0.01, times 0.1 to the n. And that's, uh, just a second now, that's my, I'm trying to do this to be n plus 2, so this is plus the 19, 0.04762. So all this is just r sub n plus 2. All this is r sub n plus 2. And this is supposed to be equal to 0.4 times r sub n plus 1. So it's going to be a 0.3 times this, a 0.1 times this, and a 19. So I'm going to have a 0.3 times the negative 10.7142 times the 0.3 to the n. I'm going to have a 0.1 times this. So it's plus 41.6 bar times 0.1 times 0.1 to the n plus 
plus the 19.04762, but that's times a 0.4. Okay, and then minus 0.3. Minus 0.3 times all the uh, R, jeez, oh, I put in the, oh, this is the N plus 2. This is the R sub N plus 2. Yeah, and now i got to do just the R sub N. So that's the uh, minus 0.03 times the regular old R sub N. I'll just write it all up. 10.71429.3 to the N plus 0 0.0 plus, point, plus 41.6 bar, 0 0.1 to the N plus 19.04762. Close parentheses. Okay, so you put all this together, and what you're supposed to do is get a true statement that the left-hand side, here's the left-hand side up here, is supposed to be equal to the right-hand side. So let's just do the, uh, let's do the point uh, three, nine, 3 to the n's together. So I have to do 0 0.09 times this, and that's, uh, that's the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, I have 0.4 times 0.3 times this 10, and then I have another point minus another 0 0.03 times this 10. Um, let me do that on my calculator. I'm just going to plug it in. Okay, let's recap. I don't know if you'd ever do this, but I'm trying to show you that you can check. So what we're checking right now is the 0.3 to the n stuff. Letting the rest of it slide. Checking the 0.3 to the n stuff. So I have my equation. And I'm checking the 0.3 to the n stuff in there. So here is the r sub n plus 2. This guy right here is the solution. Let me let me box that off. This is my this is the correct solution. I've checked it myself. It is correct. That is the correct solution. Now we're checking it. So I have to do n plus 2, which is 0.3 to the n times 0.3 times 0.3. 0.3 squared is 0.09. So that's the r sub n plus 2 piece. And then I have to have it equal to 0.4 times the r sub n plus 1 piece. There's the 0.4. Here's the r sub n plus 1 piece. See the 0.3 to the first. Then it has to be minus 0.03 times the r sub n piece. There's a minus sign here. There's a minus sign here. I did these on my calculator. I'm going to put it up to you and show you that. Well, this one here I did already. This piece here, the r sub n plus 2. I got a negative 0.964278, and here's my calculation for the other side. Let's see if I can get that just right for you. There. See that? I've got the negative 0.96427. I'm matching it up. I've got it. So the coefficients of the 0.3 to the n match. You can do the other two yourself. It takes a little bit of work, but everything matches up. Now I give you a problem right here. It's easier to write it on the board than it is to type it out. Um, that's your homework problem. You have a second order homework problem to do, and you have two first order problems to do. And uh, you might see some answers to those sometime soon. Get to work.